When it comes to armor in Monster Hunter, defenses and resistances are nice, but what you really want are the armor skills. This guide series is going to focus on a progression path that you can easily follow for a reasonable build to get you through low rank and high rank. In low rank, progression is fairly linear and there isn't a lot of need to deviate. High rank is much more open-ended and will have many more options for you to explore. High rank builds will focus on decoration lists and charmless setups as those require rare materials and a lot of luck for decorations. You will need to make a choice between alpha and beta gear. Alpha gear has more skills, but sometimes has skills that aren't particularly useful on them. The beta versions usually give up skills for decoration slots. If you don't have decorations, the alpha sets are always better. If you have powerful decorations, the beta pieces are usually the better option as it will allow for further customization. These builds are reasonably effective and will be sufficient for getting you through the game. You may have skills that you favor on certain weapon types that aren't listed, and you should experiment to learn your playstyle. Your default armor is terrible, and you'll want to upgrade it right away. The easiest thing you can do is just build the entire bone set. This will be mostly beneficial for the headpiece's health boost, granting you plus 15 maximum HP, and the bone chest's attack up, granting you plus 3 attack power. The remaining bone pieces will benefit certain weapon types and not others. The gloves will give slugger, which is good for blunt weapons like hammer, hunting horn, and file attacks from the charge blade and switch axe. Bone Coil is only good for Hunting Horn, but it will extend the length of your songs. The Bone Greaves grant Entomologist, which helps prevent you from destroying Vespoids and Hornitars so you can carve them. Regardless of the skills it offers, this set is extremely easy to build and represents a good armor value spike that you should take starting out. Early on you'll be given an assignment to hunt Kestodons. After carving some, you'll unlock the ability to build Kestodon Gloves. Build these for Affinity Sliding, which gives you a temporary boost to your critical hit rate after sliding for a short period of time. They also have a strong defense boost over bone gauntlets and should be picked up for most weapon types. This set will be enough to tide you over until you hunt Great Jagras. Afterwards, you'll want to look into picking up the Jagras Coil. This provides Fortify, which gives you an attack and defense bonus if your HP reaches zero and you're carted back to camp. Fortify is a nice bonus for new players, and even veteran players will cart occasionally. It's a good pickup for all weapon types. Then you'll have to hunt Kulu Yaku. You'll want to build both its Kulu male chest armor and the Kulu Greaves leg armor. The chest grants stamina surge which increases your stamina recovery rate. This is a great skill for every weapon type, but certain weapons will benefit much more from it. The Kulu Greaves grant critical eye which increases your affinity or critical hit rate by 3%. This isn't huge, but going from 0 to 3% affinity will actually allow you to perform critical hits and it will be a significant damage increase. This will be an acceptable set of baseline armor for the next mandatory fights. From here on though, things will be handled on a weapon by weapon basis. Gunlance is a few playstyles. The easiest to use is the burst fire combo, and the easiest way to up your damage numbers is through skills like artillery. Guard may seem extremely useful for Gunlance, but it's actually not the best skill. You can pick up some guard along the way, but it's usually better to reposition rather than block attacks, so evade extender is favored. The favored skill for this guide are artillery, capacity boost, and evade extender. The base armor set will have to tide you over to take on Pookie Pookie and Baroth. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of Gunlance specific gear for a while. The Baroth head grants Guard. Guard isn't the most useful skill on Gunlance, but it will be a more useful option over the Bone Helm's plus 15 HP. Then you'll have to hunt Jura Totus, followed by Toby Kadachi. There are a few upgrades you can pick up from Toby Kadachi. The Kadachi Helm gives the skill Constitution. This reduces your stamina drain while dodging and guarding. The Kadachi Gloves grant Evade Extender. Evade Extender is great for Gunlance as it will allow you to close distances easier to monsters and reposition more quickly. It's a great skill, especially when combined with Constitution for reduced stamina consumption while dodging. It's your call whether you prefer Guard or Constitution on the head slot, but I believe Constitution is the better pick. Your next hunt is Anjaneth. Anjanath's boots grant artillery, and this should be considered a must build. Your shelling attacks can't critical hit from affinity, so losing the Kulu boots isn't a huge deal. You'll get a power spike on your burst fire, and reduced cooldown on your wyvern fire. Pick these up as soon as possible. After you're in the Coral Highlands, you'll have to hunt Paolumu as part of the story, but you can deviate. There are a lot of good upgrades here for Gunlance. You should mine for Dragonite Ore as soon as possible to build the High Metal Coil. This gives you Capacity Boost, which increases your max number of shells by one. Obviously, this has great synergy with Artillery and your Burst Fire combo. This should be considered a must build. Then you should hunt Zitsiyaku and pick up its chest armor for Constitution. 
Now hunt Paolumu, and you'll want some of its gear too. If you swap out the Kadachi hat for Paolumu's hat, you're trading Constitution for Stamina Surge. It's a toss-up, but Paolumu's hat will have better natural defense. You'll also want to replace Toby's gloves for Paolumu's gloves, as they grant artillery. You'll be trading Evade Extender 1 for level 2 artillery here. This current set will be more than adequate for taking on the rest of low rank. Hunt Legiana and Odegaron, followed by Rathalos and Diablos. Rathalos' chest is a great option for weakness exploit, but it does require a plate. It's a nice pickup, but since your shells can't critically hit, and you're so close to high rank at this point that it's probably not worth farming. Rathalos' headgear is also a reasonable option, but again, we have more choices in high rank. Build these if you want, but it's time to move on. High rank finally introduces us to some options. There's a lot of upgrades available now, and you can immediately go and hunt high rank versions of everything in low rank. The easy answer is that anything that worked for you in low rank will work here, while providing additional skills and high rank defenses. This guide assumes you have no useful decorations. As such, the beta gear is simply worse than the alpha gear as it loses skills for decoration slots. If you have decorations, consider the beta versions of some pieces, otherwise stick with alpha. The big upgrades would be to upgrade your headgear to the Kulu Headpiece Alpha. This gives fire resistance and more importantly weakness exploit, one of the best skills in the game. It's an easy build and should be your first priority. Afterwards you'll have a ton of options for artillery and high rank. You'll want to stack to 3 as soon as possible. There are two reasonable build options for you here, the Paolumu style and the Anjanat style. For the Paolumu style, start by hunting Hornitars in the Rotten Vale to build the Hornitar Greaves. Consider the beta set for the socket as you won't be able to reasonably utilize the alpha's dragon attack until after Nergigante. Next hunt Paolumu and build its van braces and its chest armor. If you want to hunt Anjanath, you can pair its set with Toby Kadachi's for maxed out Evade Extender. You can hunt Toby Kadachi in high rank for the Kadachi Gloves, which grants 2 stacks of Evade Extender, as well as the Chest, which will max out Evade Extender. Then hunt Anjanath to build its boots for 2 stacks of artillery. You now have a choice to make. You can max out artillery by upgrading your coil to the Anja Coil Alpha, but you'll lose Capacity Boost. Capacity Boost has a lot of burst damage, so it's probably worth hanging on to, but you will be able to regain it later. That being said, you'll get the two-piece Anjanath set bonus of Adrenaline. Adrenaline isn't a great skill, but it can save you in a pinch if you're cornered and forced to block a combo since it negates stamina depletion while under 40% health. With the Anja Coil, you'll lose out on capacity boost but gain a ton of fire resistance, max evade extender, adrenaline, and higher defenses. This would be my recommended path. Both of these sets will be great options for taking out the Pink Rathian and other medium tier high rank monsters. If you don't like the Kulu Head Alpha on the Lumu style, you can pick up the Wrath Heart Helm Alpha for Evade Extender and Poison Attack, which will have reasonable synergy with the Pink Rathian's Rose Burst Gun Lance. Unfortunately, losing out on Weakness Exploit is a tough sell. After reaching the Elder's Recess, you can hunt Dodogama for more artillery options. The boots grant Capacity Boost, and the Coil gives Artillery Level 2. You can also build a High Metal Coil Alpha for Capacity Boost as well, since it requires Fusiomar from the Elder's Recess. One extra shell on your Burst Fire is probably worth losing the extra Artillery and Adrenaline if you're using the Kadashi and your Mix set. If you're using the Lumu style, swap your Waste Armor for the Pink Rathian Coil and your Boots for the Dodogama Boots and you'll maintain the same skills but gain High Rank Defenses and Poison Resistance. If you're using the Anja style, upgrade your waist and legs to Dodogama set to lose one artillery for capacity boost. Unfortunately, you'll also lose adrenaline, but it's not the end of the world. You have another option, but you'll lose out on a lot of damage and utility for the ability to not lose sharpness. If you're really struggling with your sharpness, hunt Odegaron to build its set. You'll want to build the head, chest, arms, and boots for the 4-piece set bonus of Protective Polish. Protective Polish prevents your weapon's sharpness from degrading for one minute after sharpening. It's a great skill, but you lose a lot to get it at this point. If you go with this, pair it with Dodogama's Coil to maintain some artillery.
If you're using the other sets, hunt Rathalos to pick up the Rathalos male beta for weakness exploit. You'll lose some evade extender or artillery, but the two points of weakness exploit in a decoration slot will be well worth it. This will have to tide you over until you've beaten the Elder Dragons. There isn't a lot of Gunlance specific equipment here. The Elder Dragon sets aren't necessarily better or worse than this set, just different. Nergigante's Dragon King eye patch is a safe pickup for Weakness Exploit 2 and a tier 3 decoration slot. After Teostra, you can actually upgrade to the third tier of the Artillery Charm. This guide is meant to be charm and decorationless, but you will be severely limited in your build options until you can get alternative sources of artillery and capacity boost. The easiest way to achieve this is through the Artillery Charm. You will need a Teostra gem and an Anjaneth gem to upgrade the Artillery Charm to level 3, but it will give you a lot more build options. This will be an easy way to free up your gloves, waist, and boot options for superior equipment and get some much needed handicraft. The next interesting gear mostly comes from Kushala Daura for handicraft. You should look out for the Kushala Cruce Alpha for boots which gives us extremely valuable handicraft as well as a Vade Extender. The chest beta for handicraft in a slot since focus is worthless on a gun lance. Then it's just a matter of filling things in as you go. This is something like your final build may look like with an artillery level 3 charm. Keep in mind that I do have a weakness exploit decoration in the Dragon King eye patch to push it from level 2 to level 3. Handicraft at level 3 from the Kushala Daura gear will give you a reasonable amount of white sharpness on the Royal Burst. You'll maintain most of your evade extender and keep artillery and capacity boost with something like this. Your final targets will definitely want to include a protective polish decoration which will negate the one glaring weakness of Gunlance. Then ideally you'll be able to pick up artillery and capacity boost decorations to free up more of your set for options. Of course, decoration farming is completely luck based. So I wish you luck and hope you get the ones that you want.